Hey guys, we get a lot of questions about Cummins ISX and X15 throughout the week. And today I'm gonna share some information that could possibly save you thousands of dollars. So if you own a Cummins or any diesel engine, take note of the items that we're gonna be looking for when troubleshooting overflow or excessive coolant pressure. Guys, if you haven't subscribed to us yet, make sure to subscribe to us and hit that notification bell so you know next time we release another video. If you'd like to share your experience, leave it in the comments below. Let's get right into this video. As I mentioned, we get a lot of questions about Cummins ISX 15 and X15 throughout the week and we play close attention when we get reports about excessive coolant pressure or coolant overflow. In one case a customer had a shop rebuild his entire engine because of coolant overflow and after everything was done he still had the same problem. This is why it's very important to troubleshoot this problem correctly. As we all know diagnosing a problem can be expensive so when you're dealing with a major component you want to be hundred percent sure that's the failure. In this particular truck we're getting excessive coolant pressure or coolant overflow. After a while of driving, he can be on the road driving just fine, but he'll get an indication that his coolant is low. He gets in, his coolant is actually low. He'll see it as if it's actually being lost. After letting it sit and cool off, he'll see the coolant actually rise. He's kind of getting some idea that you're getting some pressure in the system. There's an indication of this and that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through the troubleshooting procedures to actually find out what's going on. If we got pressure going into the system or where this actually coolant is going if we are losing coolant. Now on most engines, Coolant is gonna be ran through various components to help operate the truck. For example, the EGR cooler uses coolant as well. Most of the time, whenever you have an EGR cooler failure, you're gonna have loss of coolant. But in some cases, you can have pressure going into the system. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and cancel out this EGR cooler. And the way we're gonna do that is by getting some eyes on it. What I've done is I've already taken the inlet part of the of the, uh, of the the EGR cooler off so we can get some eyes in it here. It's gonna be tough to see if we can get this on video. But it, as you can see, it's pretty dry in there. We don't have any issues going on on the inside of this cooler. Let's see if we can get some shots in there so you do the same thing with the outlet of the EGR cooler as well we're looking for any signs of coolant another test that you can do is a coolant strip test the cooler is still expected to be in a failure like I mentioned most of the time when an EGR cooler fails you're gonna actually be losing coolant but another test you can do is a coolant strip test it's basically getting distilled uh, water in a glass and pulling a putting a coolant strip tester in there and just basically getting a baseline reading and then what you can do is get some of the soot out of the EGR cooler and put it in that water mix it up do a use another test strip and see if you see a difference. If there's a difference, then that's gonna be an indication you got coolant going in your EGR cooler. But in this case, this EGR cooler looks pretty dry. We don't suspect this is gonna be the failure just about, just because what the truck is actually, or, the, or what the uh, driver's reporting, he's reporting excessive pressure or reporting having to add coolant because it's being pushed out. The amount of coolant that this driver has added since uh, this fault has happened does not does not go in line with anything of the cooler. So for example, if he's, he's someone is adding uh, a gallon a week of coolant. That's gonna be really noticeable if it's an EGR cooler. You're gonna be able to see it very, very easy, whether it's gonna be on the intake side or the outlet side. So I wanna move over to the next component that needs to be checked. So let's move over to the driver's side of the truck. Another component that uses coolant is gonna be the air compressor. Now this, this is the air compressor that charges the air tanks for the air brake, and it uses coolant to keep it cool during operation. It's basically like any other engine. It has a piston with a head, and it uses coolant to cool the head off. So if you have a failure with your compressor, for example, if you have a cracked head on the compressor, uh, it's a possibility that compressor, that compression that's actually made for the pressure for the air tanks can go into the cooling system and cause some extreme pressure. And usually that pressure is gonna be really quick. And the way that you can check to see if it's the compressor is what I've done here is I've taken off the, the outlet of the, of the compressor discharge line, as you can see, and you can see it's dry. There's no coolant. There's no coolant on that compressor discharge ship there. Also, if you do have coolant coming out of there or in your tank, that's gonna be an indication you have a bad compressor. Now there's one more test that we're gonna do to kind of really kind of pinpoint where this problem's coming from. And one of this test is called, it's gonna be called combustion gas test. So let's move over to that test next and see what we can find. So as you can see there, we got a change in color. 
I'm gonna put um, I'm gonna put the blue. This is what the liquid looks like before the test, and this is what the liquid looks like now. Uh, you can see the difference in color. So it changed from blue to green. That's an indication that we do have combustion gas going into the cooling system. We did have to run the truck for a little bit, so that's combustion gases can actually make it to the cooling system, and we can get a reading. Now we have the EGR a cooler completely disconnected, so this is this is actually combustion gas going into the cooling system, and unfortunately we're gonna have to pull this head for further inspection. So that's what we're going to request for this particular customer and that's what we're going to be doing on this particular job. Okay guys, so that's what we found with this particular truck. We actually pulled the abuse history. Cummins allows us to pull up abuse history and we found out this truck actually went ran hot for over 330 degrees for over three minutes. That's basically just an indication that this truck got hot and we're going to go ahead and recommend this head be replaced. We are going to test it once we remove it, but since the truck already got hot, we've already got some, some combustion gas going into the cooling system we already got a failure there so we're gonna go ahead and recommend the head replacement so guys i hope you guys learned something make sure to subscribe to us if you haven't subscribed to us yet and turn on notifications so you know next time we release another video if you'd like to share your experience please leave it in the comments below and until next time guys be safe